Yo, what's going on guys? It's me, Kingsticks. I'm going to be teaching you how to play Kindred Jungle here in Season 10 for beginners. First things first, make sure you're taking the right runes. In Season 10, Conquer on Range Champions isn't that great in general, so I highly recommend you go for Press the Attack instead. For your secondary runes, just go for Sudden Impact and Relentless Hunter. You're going to be getting the most bang for your buck. You're usually going to want to start on your red buff on Kindred. However, it doesn't really matter because we're just going to be doing red, blue, and Gromp for level 3. You want to try to be avoiding multiple target monster camps like wolves, raptors, golems in your first clear because they take too long and you take too much damage. The main thing on Kindred is get level 3 as fast as possible and that's what I'm showing you and have double buffs that way you can put out a gank or two and then take scuttle crab because every single time 100% of the time your first mark is on a scuttle crab. So you want to make sure you're there for when it comes up. So next we're going to be doing our blue. We got we are up against a Shaco which isn't a bad matchup for Kindred as long as you can kite the person out. So depending on your skill and depending on the champion, as long as you can kite them, it's a good matchup for Kindred. You do want to save your smite for Gromp since Gromp does a lot more damage than blue buff and blue buff's easier to kite. The only reason why I smited the blue buff is because I accidentally hit the Gromp as well with my Q since it is AoE. So I was fighting both of them at once. So I was just trying to get the blue buff out of the way since it was lower. Rengar shoved up, he's pressuring my top laner hard. I'm going to drop my mark on him here once he can see me right about now. Now he can't get away. I'm behind him. It doesn't matter if he starts to run. I'm going to drop my mark. He's going to stay on top of him. There we go. We just got first blood. I'm going to leave the wave there. I don't really feel like pushing it. It's just such a big wave. He should just freeze it and I'll come back and gank later. If it was thinner or if it wasn't cannon wave, I would have stayed soak XP and gold. There's Nico. I'm looking for Shaco and I'm playing around Scuttle Spawn, guys. Scuttle Spawn's 315. So you have time to hit level 3 with double buffs on Kindred, do two ganks, and then get Scuttle Crab. Nico isn't really gankable right now, though. She's just. She's kind of just playing back. She's. She's playing really far back. She kind of did a bad flash there, but we're getting down some pressure. Even if Shaco comes over here now, I have top prio from this gank and I have mid prio from this gank. It's all about setting up scuttle crabs, not necessarily depending on your laners of, oh, please come help me. If you can set up situations where you allow your laners to come help you, like with what I just did, you'll be getting much more consistent marks, which is important for Kindred to scout uh, consistently. Rengar does have flash. We're probably not going to kill him here. It looks like Shaco started red side, path into bot lane. Uh, yes, yeah, Golem should be coming up soon, I would think. Yeah, we can't really gank it. He's playing under turret. We have big wave. I'm just going to back. I would like to wait a little bit to get my tier 2 boots. I should be, still be able to get them. So if you're ahead early game on Kindred, especially if you know you can solo the enemy jungler, going for an early tier 2 boots is really, really strong because you can stay on top of them. So that's actually exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to path back into my top lane because it's a really easy gank. Bot lane shoved. And they're about to reset. Rengar's wave is going to shove out here if you're paying attention. His wave has more minions. It's higher HP. It's going to be a slow push. And he's behind, so he's going to be greedy. Uh, which is going to allow me to kill him again. Jump over the wall. Make sure you're always queuing within your W. When you're fighting camps and champions, that way it'll be on a much lower cooldown. If you're not queuing within your W, or if you leave your W circle, you basically just f yourself really hard. If you're not going to get an early Hunter's Talisman, so like on your first back, you need to make sure you're avoiding Raptors and Golem Camps because they're very inefficient to take without Hunter Talisman. Also, I should have gotten an Oracle Lens on my back there, but I messed up and didn't. I'm going to chug a potion. Getting an Oracle Lens on your first back on Kindred is kind of important for ganking. He probably just worded it right there, so I'm going to walk around. Uh, yeah, he just worded it, so I'm just literally going to run around. Pop this plant. He probably didn't ward the tri brush since he was so far shoved. He just worded that. Yeah, he's dead. I'm a behind him. As long as you come up behind Von Kindred, it's really simple. You just Q W E. And I'm gonna get my mark. He has nowhere to go. He really should have given me the kill gold on that, to be honest. It's whatever. So another lane that's not necessarily gankable. I see Shaco's bot side, so his top side jungle should be up based off his CS. Uh, I'll swap the mark to him. I'll take this. Even though I don't recommend taking this stuff when you don't have Hunter's Talisman. If you know the enemy jungler can't come and stop you, it can be a good opportunity. Because of what you saw just there, I got a free mark. 
So for those of you wondering, the first mark is always going to be on a scuttle crab 100% of the time. When you have zero marks, the first one's always going to be on a scuttle crab. And then marks one through three is going to be on scuttles, wraps, or gromp. And that's what I was kind of playing around there. It was lucky, I'll be honest, but just setting yourself up for consistent situations where you have a lot of gain and uh, very little risk is what you want to do. For those of you wanting to improve at League of Legends or just get better at life in general, just set yourself up for many situations where the reward is going to be greater than the potential risk and that's league of legends honestly just constant little situations equals a win or at least increases your chances of winning it's just recognizing those situations all right looks like bot lane isn't gankable honestly uh my ezreal isn't here and they're still both full hp so even though they're shoved up like trying to fight them full HP is going to be tough. Shaco's not at his... Okay, Shaco's going to be at his red buff. It's spawning in, so I think my Gromp's going to be free. And I just DC'd. Well, guys, I guess that's how you play Kindred in the early game. I can't believe it just cut out on me, but don't worry. I'm still going to show you how to play her in the mid and late game in this video. In the mid game, it's important to focus on who you can kite and kill. In this particular game, I focus around killing the Rumble and asserting dominance on him since he can't really escape from Kindred because she's so slippery. Another thing that you want to try to do is not use your ultimate too early and to also use your E in combination with your ultimate. Here, I wait until I'm a low as hell possible. I know he's going to win the trade until I use my E and my ulti. I Q E ultimate and then I only apply two two out of the three stacks on my E while we are inside of my ult. This way we're prepping it so right when my ultimate ends, I can just Q away and auto him to finish him off. Wait to use my red smite in this particular situation when I was planning on using my ult until after my ult was about to end so I would take 20% reduced damage after we both come out of my ult to help me win that fight. The point is, if you know you're going to have to use your ultimate to win the fight, you want to try to save your smite and your E and time them to where you're getting their value right as your ultimate ends. Once Kindred has a full item, she can easily solo dragon extremely fast. Same thing with Herald as well. In the late game, you're going to want to play around walls. They're your best friend and they will win you the game. Whenever you get into a fight, make sure there's a wall nearby you can use to quickly get out of danger and then re-engage. Make sure you're doing this all within your W, of course. That way your Q comes off a of cooldown ASAP. In this particular fight, I was looking to use Dragon Wall. If they all engaged on me, I was going to jump southwards away from them. With the way the fight panned out, I end up going north towards this little wall right here, and I was getting ready to use it, but with the way the enemies collapsed, there was really no need, and I could play neutral in the fight, not having to use either defensive wall. For long-term chase downs or flanking enemies, Kindred's dash is really OP as well. They don't expect it, and as long as you keep your eyes open, there will be lots of opportunities to cut enemies off. Any place there is a wall, Kindred's a massive threat. Here, as I poke down his turret, Rumble wants to engage on me. I stay within my W, I Q over the wall and blast him. He just can't get to me. This is why Kindred is just so deadly versus melee champions. It's the same thing against this Trindomir. I can poke him down the moment he jumps over the wall. I can just jump over and then just jump back. Activate my ultimate. I jump over at the end and then I'm out of that situation. Late game in team fights, you want to make sure you're not the first one to get engaged on. Unless you're right by a wall, you can jump over. Preferably let an enemy get caught out of position or wait for the fight to already break out. Once again, unless you are already near a wall. And if a chase situation does ensue, Kindred's really, really, really good at it. She's very difficult to get away from. In this situation, the Ezreal Qs and the Karma Qs are two particular abilities that make it quite difficult, but even so, we get the Echo and the Rumble and push into the inhibitor and set up the win. Final late game tip I have for you guys is if you're in a pinch, drop down your ultimate and finish autoing off the Nexus. Unless they have hard CC, it's a solid way to secure the win. That's going to wrap up this Kindred Jungle Guide for Season 10. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm immensely. My name is King Sticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. My world's so bright. It's hard to breathe, but that's all right. Hush.